You're now listening to the Fantasy Filler Podcast. Where we put you in the driver's seat every week, all year long. In the NASCAR racing world, from top news stories, latest results, and best fantasy lineups, we'll have you up to speed and out in front before the drop of the green flag. So let's dive in with our host, Vanilla Wafers. All right, I've been waiting for that new intro for so long. What's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Fantasy Filler Podcast. I have been waiting for this name change for quite a while. I felt like the time was right after the 2022 season to do the adjustment here on the name change. We will talk about that as well as some of the top news stories that we have seen in the last couple of weeks here in today's episode. Hopefully you guys have been doing well here as we are in the middle of Thanksgiving week. Definitely one of the bigger holidays, so hopefully you guys got some fun plans, whether it's eating a lot of food, hanging out with family or friends, watching the football game, or just enjoying the extra two days off in the week. I know I'm going to be enjoying that. I know I'm going to be putting down a lot of food. I'm going to be watching all three of the Thanksgiving games. Hopefully my picks are able to come in with the victory. I decided to go with the Bills, obviously, against the Lions as well as the Cowboys beating the Giants. And then I got the Patriots beating the Vikings. Yep, I'm I'm expecting an upset there simply because Kirk Cousin just cannot win during prime time. Obviously, this is not a football podcast. This is a NASCAR podcast. And we haven't really had that many news stories happen in the last couple of weeks. I know in the last episode we had that we were going to be trying to do an episode once per week. But my goodness... I did not expect the news stories just to plummet overnight. I was expecting maybe some announcements. Hey, this driver's not returning. Maybe this driver's going to be returning. Maybe a switch up in the crew chiefs and car chiefs. Maybe a team was going to make an announcement. None of that hardly happened. It was like one or two news stories. And everyone's just like, all right, see you next week. And that was about it. So I felt like we've got enough news stories to actually put on a decent episode for you guys and kind of talk about what this means going forward here towards the 2023 season. Will these changes affect who we think will be viable drivers going into the first couple races? Maybe even drivers going into the playoffs. I know it's super early to talk about playoff contenders, but before we dive into that, what's with the name change? Obviously, That's the biggest elephant in the room. Why would we change the Field Filler Podcast to the Fantasy Filler Podcast after two and a half years of gaining such a big fan base? Well, to be honest with you, the podcast has greatly changed in the last couple of years. Even this year, it's it's changed quite a bit. As when I first started this podcast, it was more of kind of like a comedic NASCAR podcast where nothing was really taken seriously. I was just doing whatever the hell I wanted to try to get through the COVID pandemic. And then as time went by, a lot of people got very interested in who I thought were the best drivers to go with each and every weekend when it came to fantasy picks. And the podcast slowly changed episode by episode on which drivers I thought were going to be doing really good this weekend, which drivers do I think would be best to sit out, as well as final results, biggest takeaways. So I really felt like the podcast is no longer about field fillers. It is definitely more about fantasy picks. Which drivers do you want to put in your fantasy league? Which drivers do you think are going to give you the best options? How are you going to wind up on top of your fantasy leagues with the drivers for certain said weekends, for which racetracks, all that good stuff. So I figured it's time to make the change. Hopefully you guys do really like it. And hopefully this could potentially even open the door for new guests to come on. It it was always really hard to try to get a NASCAR driver from any single division because, you know, some of these drivers are kind of trying to get into the sport When you get a podcast called The Field Filler, which basically means, hey, you're just there just to collect a paycheck. They really frown upon that and they don't really want to reply to any of your messages. So hopefully this brings some adjustments and hopefully it is a good telltale sign on where the podcast will end up going into the 2023 season. But now let's talk about some bit of news that we've seen here in the past couple of weeks. 
At first, like I said, the first week, I, I only got like one or two news stories that was worth mentioning. Now we got a few more, some big announcements regarding some bigger teams here in the Cup Series, as well as some of the other series, including the Xfinity Series, as well as the Trucks. So without further ado, let's dive into it. For the first time here in the offseason, let's look at the biggest news stories here in the NASCAR racing world. <laughs> So why don't we first start off with a news story that talked about a couple of Cup Series drivers who participated in one of the Nitro Rallycross races just a couple weeks ago. It was a doubleheader weekend for this series down in Phoenix, and two of the top Cup Series drivers decided to compete in it, those being the 2020 champion of Chase Elliott, as well as the 2022 Daytona 500 winner of Austin Sindrick. It's always really cool when you see these NASCAR drivers go down a series or go to a completely different series to compete. But unfortunately for these two drivers, they did not have themselves a good showing as neither of them were able to qualify into the main event. Austin Sindrick and Chase Elliott both finished 4th and 5th respectively in the qualifiers. And unfortunately, when it comes to Rally Kosh, you got to finish 3rd or better. So none of these drivers were able to move on into the main event. The winner of the weekend, however, was Travis Pastrana, one of the most well-known rallycross racers as well as just the most well-known motorsports driver out there. He mostly competes down in the motocross side, the X Games kind of level of sports. He also competed in a few x Series and Truck Series races. Fortunately, did not find too much success. But as you can clearly see here, he definitely found it in the Rallycross circuit as he was able to get a huge victory here this weekend. But unfortunately for two of the Cup Series drivers that competed, neither of them were able to move on into the main event. Moving on now, we got ourselves the biggest announcement as far as a driver lineup goes for the 2023 season, and this involves with Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, it was all just confirmed at this point. Like, we knew this was going to happen. We were just waiting for the announcement. Well, it finally happened on November 15th, just about a week ago, that Ty Gibbs is moving up to the Cup Series full-time in 2023. The number he's going to be driving, however, will not be the number 18, rather the number 54. Now, this makes all the sense in the world just for the simple fact that he was able to win his x Series championship in the number 54 machine and also the fact that his father, that was the last number he ever saw his son race in. Because obviously you guys know the tragic situation that happened with Coy Gibbs. Uh, that same night where Ty Gibbs won the championship, he just randomly passed away in the middle of the night. I- I'm not sure 100% what it was. But either way, it was a tragic situation, and I'm pretty sure this was definitely the number that Ty Gibbs was begging his grandfather, Joe Gibbs, to race in the Cup Series. How he's going to do next year, it will be very interesting to see just for the simple fact on how much he struggled in that number 23 car as he was substituting for Kurt Busch in the final few races of the year. And and maybe not the final few races, basically it was the second half of the season. Now we got two questions here. One, what are they going to do with the number 18 machine? Are they even going to be running it at all? Well, according to Joe Gibbs, he intends to utilize the number 18 machine in the NASCAR Cup Series, but in future years. So there could be an opportunity that you see someone try to drive the number 18 machine, but we could very well not see the number 18 car in a Cup Series event in God knows how many years. I think it's been like... Gosh, I can't even throw a number out there. Almost 30 years since the last time we didn't see the number 18 car out there on the racetrack. So it will be very, very interesting to see if that number 18 car is not competing next year. However, it looks like Joe Gibbs Racing is still going to hold on to the number when the time is right. More than likely, if you see someone like Martin Trex Jr. retire from the sport, then maybe, just maybe, Joe Gibbs Racing will bring the number back full time. Now, the other question that a lot of people have on their mind is, will Ty Gibbs be a force to be reckoned with here in his full-time rookie season? That That's really tough to say. I, I, I don't know if I really see it just by how much he struggled because honestly, before entering the Cup Series, he never was put in equipment that he struggled to race near the front. And you really saw that During his time in the Cup Series, he made some very questionable moves, really struggled, had a hard time adapting. 
So I'm hoping it's not a situation that you see a lot of other drivers who run the Xfinity Series, then they get moved on up into the Cup Series too quickly, and then everything falls apart. I don't think that's going to be the case, just for the simple fact on who his grandfather is. Uh, I, I don't know if you'll see him, however, make it into the playoffs. The only way he's going to make it into the playoffs is if one... He basically does a night and day transition from what he did this year in the 2022 season. Or B, he gets a very lucky victory at one of the racetracks in the regular season. That could potentially happen. I mean, we've seen him do, be very successful when it comes to road courses. But with the added drivers such as AJ Allmendinger coming in full time, he's going to be really good at road courses. Obviously, Chase Elliott does really well. Kyle Larson's been very dominant. You got track house racing with both their drivers, Ross Chastain, as well as Daniel Suarez, been a force to be reckoned with at those types of racetracks. It's going to be hard to rely on going for a victory. So I'm I'm excited to see what Ty Gibbs can do. Uh, whether you like him or not, he is a very talented driver. However, I don't know if you're going to be seeing him in make it into the playoffs in his first full-time rookie season. Still, some very exciting news here as Ty Giz will be moving up into the Cup Series in 2023, driving the number 54 Toyota. Making the transition on over from Joe Gibbs Racing now to Stuart Haas Racing, there was a big announcement regarding one of their Cup Series machines. Now, there's been a lot of rumors that were circulating between who was going to be driving that number 41 machine. Was it going to be Cole Custer or was it going to be Ryan Priest? Well, the announcement was finally made on November 16th that Ryan Priest will be replacing Cole Custer in the Cup Series and Cole Custer will be moving back down into the Xfinity Series with Stuart Haas Racing. Definitely a big announcement here after the success that we saw with Cole Custer in the lower series, both in the Trucks and Xfinity series. He did so good in those series, and then he moved on up into the Cup series. Things were looking fairly decent. I mean, he was able to get a victory in his rookie year, but then after that, he didn't do anything, like nothing at all. It was a very abysmal last couple of years for Cole Custer. I mean... What, how many top 10s did he get? I, I honestly got to look that up because I, I feel like the number is almost as bad as like Danica Patrick, Al although Danica Patrick ran like six years but to get that many top 10s. But Cole Custer was not that far behind. It was very, very interesting to see him struggle as much as he did in that number 41 car when in fact we all thought that he was going to be a championship caliber driver within a couple of years. Uh, and, and if you guys are wondering, the number was 12. I just looked it up. 12 top 10s in 93 starts. For top tier equipment and for a big prospect like Cole Custer, that's pretty abysmal. Now let's move on to the driver who's replacing him, Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest used to run in the Cup Series for JTG Daughtry Racing. Now, his performances and his finishes were not that spectacular. However, when comparing Stuart Haas Racing to JTG Daughtry Racing, definitely the budget is completely different. And you can tell that that team was mostly a one-car operation. When they went to a two-car operation, the team definitely really struggled. And that's where Ryan Priest was for his first couple of years in the Cup Series. He uh, eventually lost his ride and then decided to become a developmental driver for Stuart Haas Racing as well as running a few races down the Xfinity Series as well as the Truck Series. What he has proven in the last year or so is that he is a very, very consistent driver when he is given the right equipment. I mean, let's look at a few of his finishes here down the Truck Series the last couple of years. He's gotten two victories in the Truck Series and just only a handful of starts, 12 to be exact, and 11 top 10 finishes. 11 top 10 finishes. And honestly, that finish at Charlotte should have been a top uh, 5 finish, or if not a victory, if he does not make contact with Carson Hosevar. So, great results down there in the Truck Series, and then running for BJ McLeod in the number 5 machine this year for a couple races, a 16th place finish at Richmond, and then a 5th place finish at Charlotte, and a 6th place finish at Nashville for equipment that was honestly mediocre at best. So I think this transition for Ryan Priest coming into the Cup Series with the number 41 machine is the right call. He's been able to get a few top 10s when he was over with JTG Daughtry Racing in that number 37 machine as well as the number 47. He's gotten some good finishes here and there, but you're definitely running on better equipment. 
Cole Custer, it is a shame to see him going back down to the Xfinity Series, but obviously his performance issues was definitely starting to show here in the Cup Series. Maybe he needs more time down here, and then he can make that transition on up. Now, what does that mean for Riley Herps, driver of the number 98 machine in the Xfinity Series? Does that mean he is going to be getting the boot? Well, actually, no. It has been announced that he will be returning full-time once again in the 2023 season with Stuart Haas Racing. So that means Stuart Haas Racing will be turning into a two-car operation down in the Xfinity Series. I think having both Cole Custer and Riley Herps together down there will be a benefit for that Xfinity Series team. Because, let's be honest here, when going into the playoffs even throughout the regular season, Riley Herbst was definitely kind of an oddball when it came to the races. And not saying that he was like, his racing style was way off or he was doing things really stupid. It was just a simple fact that he didn't really have any teammates to rely on down there in the Xfinity series. And you could really see that that was really starting to affect him. Like the Xfinity series, believe it or not, when it comes to having teammates, it's very important. I think the only team to really go against that rule in the last couple of years was when Austin Cedric was driving the number 22 machine for Roger Penske Racing. That's like the only outlier. Other than that, you hardly see any single car teams really running that dominant. So I think having Cole Custer down there, giving Riley Herbst the tips and advice and kind of training him to be a better driver down the Xfinity Series is going to really help out. I did not think Riley Herbst should have been an option to move on up into the Cup Series. He still needs more time down there. And we'll see if Cole Custon can even be a championship factor going down in the Xfinity Series. I mean, it, it should be a good lineup for him. It, he's gotten some big drivers out into the Cup Series. So he should be a front runner. You still got some strong competition like Regan Smith in the number seven. You also got Josh Berry. Um, Chandler Smith will be making the move on up with uh, colleague racing as well as having both Landon Castle and Daniel Hemrick. So it should be pretty exciting down the X-Fantasy series to see what Cole Custer can do with Stuart Haas Racing. So don't worry for all you Riley Herbst fans. You'll still have him returning back to Stuart Haas Racing down in the X-Fantasy series. Next bit of news is regarding NASCAR in itself, as on November 17th, they made the big announcement of the creation of a brand new international series, the NASCAR Brazil Sprint Race. Yep, another international series has now entered NASCAR, this now being the fourth one, the other three being the NASCAR Pinty Series in Canada, the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, as well as the NASCAR Mexico Series. This is just proving to everyone how much international attention NASCAR is getting now, especially with a lot of the transitions that they've seen in the last few years. Now we have Brazil, which is a vibrant country, rich in motorsports culture, will now have its own series, being the first series in South America. America. The information is still a little scarce at the moment. They haven't announced the 2023 schedule yet at this time, but we do see that there is an alliance between GT Sprint Race Series and what they did last year was they ran 18 sprint races over nine weekends at road courses across Brazil. So expect something a little bit similar to that with this brand new series. And who knows which drivers will be competing against it. I mean, we've had quite a few uh, top-tier Brazilian-born drivers, including Nelson Piquet Jr. as well as Miguel Paluto. Those drivers originate from the Brazilian area. So this will be very fascinating to see how well this new international series holds down here in South America. But I felt like it was news worth mentioning that NASCAR has now expanded to another different part of the world And that is Brazil with their brand new NASCAR Brazil Sprint Race. And let's stay with the topic of NASCAR right now. We'll do this one real quick. That NASCAR will be asking for additional revenue in its next TV deal. As they currently have a 10% deal when it comes with Fox and NBC, they're looking to increase that to 15% in rights fee for the next long-term media deal. If you guys are not familiar with these TV partner deals, it is currently going to the end of the 2024 season as NBC and Fox have been paying a combined $820 million annually. NASCAR is looking to sink a combined of $900 million to $950 million annually under its next contract that should go for 8 to 10 years. 
Now, this is a little bit tricky. Definitely raising your prices for the next TV rights deal is always a gamble, but we've seen NASCAR with a tremendous gain in the last uh, couple of years, especially this year. We've seen a lot of gain with that. And if Fox and NBC decide not to go that route, then more than likely you'll have someone like ESPN or one of the streaming giants that could potentially take over in the next TV right deal from 2025 all the way on into the 2030s. And we have now made it to the most recent bit of news. This is news that has came out today at the time of recording this episode. On November 22nd, Henrik Motorsports made the announcement that they will be fielding the Xfinity car once again in a handful of races in 2023. As you guys are familiar with last season in 2022, they made a few starts mostly at road courses with their Cup Series drivers. They're looking to do something similar to like that once again. People were kind of thinking maybe they would run full-time. However, since they have a big alliance with JR Motorsports, or excuse me, Junior Motorsports, they're obviously not going to go in that route. However, they want an opportunity for more of the Cup Series drivers to race, so it looks like they'll be running a handful of races at the road courses and maybe just potentially some oval racetracks as well. You could expect the likes of Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman, maybe even Chase Elliott and William Byron running this car next year. But it looks like this team will be making a return once again for a handful of races driving that iconic number 17 machine with HendrickCars.com as the sponsor. All right, now let's talk about the biggest news story here this week so far. I think last week we can give it to potentially Ryan Priest being the replacement for Cole Custer. But I think this week this is the biggest bit of news. It almost looks like it's a guarantee that we will be seeing Elio Castroneves compete in next year's Daytona 500. One of the most dominant drivers in the IndyCar series is making the jump on over to NASCAR for his first ever start in the NASCAR Cup Series at the and what a great way to start it at the Great American Race. The only thing is, it doesn't look like we are confirmed yet on which ride he will be running in that race. Here are the top two candidates right now. One being Project 91, better known as Trackhouse Racing's part-time third car. We saw that car run earlier in the 2022 season at Watkins Glen with none other than the Iceman himself of Kimi Raikkonen. That was very cool to see and you can tell that the fans were absolutely pumped and even some of the NASCAR drivers were really excited to see that Formula One driver make his start in the Cup Series. Now they are looking to run plenty of more races here in the 2023 season, the first one being the Daytona 500. A lot of people like to see Helio Castroneves make his start there, but it could also be one of the more talked about kind of meme teams, but now they have finally started making some starts, so they're not really a meme team anymore. That is the Money Team Racing, the number 50 Chevrolet that we saw in a few races last year. Now, if I had to make the choice, I'd obviously go with the number 91 machine with Trackhouse Racing. They definitely have a good program over there. I mean, look how successful they were in the 2022 season. And even Kimi Raikkonen was putting on a good show uh, for his first time ever being in a NASCAR Cup Series car. So obviously, I would like that. However, if Elio Castroneves has no choice but to run the number 50 car, I would still be all right with that as well. I mean, come on. Castro Neves running the Daytona 500. How freaking cool would that be? I don't think he's going to be um, a prospect to win the race, but I hope he has himself a really good running there, and hopefully he's able to qualify through for whichever team he runs in. But that is the biggest bit of news, that Helio Castro Neves, it's almost confirmed that he will be competing in the Daytona 500. Now, with that being said, at this moment, what we have right now With the announcement of which teams are already going to be running the Daytona 500, we are at this moment confirmed already a full field. As we have Project 91, the number 91 machine for Trackhouse Racing, the Money Team Racing, the number 50 machine. You also have Jimmy Johnson who's going to be running in the Daytona 500 with his new uh, team, which is Petty GMS Johnson Racing. And then you also have Beard Motorsports making the attempt with Austin Hill in the number 62 machine. So already we have a full roster and we're only in the month of November. More than likely we're going to have plenty more teams that are going to make their announcement that they will be running in the Daytona 500. I mean, hell, Front Row Motorsports. I just completely forgot about them. Uh, They'll be having Zane Smith running the Daytona 500. So 41 cards potentially already at this time. 
And ladies and gentlemen, those will be the top news stories that we have covered on here in the first couple of weeks into the offseason. And that will do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Here in the next couple of weeks, we should be getting some more episodes in as new news stories start to pop up here and there in the NASCAR racing world. If you do want to follow me on social media, you can do so at Twitter as I have been able to change the Twitter handle as I am now at Vanilla Wafers 44. You guys are very familiar with, obviously, the name Vanilla Wafers, so I decided to make that change. You can also look me up at the Fancy Filler Podcast. I pop up either way. Want to talk about NASCAR? Want to talk about Twitter on the verge of dying? We can talk about all of that over there on Twitter. If you do want to watch some daily NASCAR videos, you can do so at TikTok at VanillaWafers44 as well as I post daily NASCAR videos there. Right now doing some NASCAR trivia and I'll also be bringing back some of the NASCAR therapy. I decided to take a couple weeks off on there to honestly think about which route I wanted to go on there. It's been a lot of changing going in the last couple of weeks, as you can tell. Or if you want to watch me on YouTube where I post longer NASCAR videos there, that is just at Vanilla wafer it's just a singular vanilla wafer and there's no numbers in between making things a little bit easier for you guys to find that channel so let's wrap things up there thank you so much for tuning into today's episode i have been your host vanilla wafers i have been able to take you to the front of the field so why don't we grab that checkered flag do some burnouts and head on out so you all take care this has been the fantasy filler podcast <laughs>